Lauro is part of the Samuro group of companies. Uh, we deal with it basically with the tree rights. Um, that's uh, obviously a published book. We deal with musical theatre, um, a lot of playwrights, and we deal with poetry and uh, prose as well. So, and visual arts. That's that's our main day-to-day -day business. But we're involved. We're part of the Samuro group of companies, wholly owned subsidiaries. So the music um, element is very much a part of what we do as well. And that's that's you know we're part of the same family. But from, if you look at strictly from copyright, um, I think a lot of um, musicians in general, but also you know hip hop um, hip hop artists, we need to take um, our hip -hop, the copyright in our work very seriously um, and look at it as a way of making as of generating income. Um, it's you know, even Samro as a group, we, we're moving away from the label of collective society um, because that's a, it's a very archaic and very old-fashioned way, I think, of, of the way we used to operate. And we actually want to be more of a copyright management um, group of companies, assisting you um, artists, composers, performers to manage their copyright, to monetize the copyright, to protect the copyright, um, as you would with any asset management or what you'd expect from any asset manager. Um, you entrust us with your copyright, we advise you on the best way to utilize it so that it, 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 it's, it's a seed that will hopefully um, germinate and, and, and grow. So, um, with respect to can and is hip hop a career, um, if the question is can it make you money, I think we need to, it can, but I think we also need to educate and arm ourselves about what copyright is. Um, and not just look at it as a fence, but to see how we can use it to your own benefit and what's the, what are the best ways of protecting yourself and your copyright. Um, and also as a hip hop artist, any artist actually, um, how much of your art form are you involved in? Are you just a performer? Because that excludes you from um, composer's royalties, for example. You have, you know, and how much how deep are you getting into your art form? Can you play an instrument? Can you compose music? Because um, I think that's when it be starts becoming more of a of a, a livelihood. You know, when you can't. I think it's very difficult for many. And it's not, this is not limited to hip hop as a genre. To to be a musician as only a performer, for example, um, but you're not creating. It's, it's. I think if you want to 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 not creating the music, not writing the lyrics. I mean, there are very few hip hop artists who don't write, but in other genres, a lot of people just perform. They just sing. Um, someone else writes, someone else composes the music. They sing, and then everyone knows them as the face of that band, but then they're not getting the money that someone behind the scenes is getting. Um, and everyone is shocked, like, someone, what's going on here? Something is unfair. And it's because people don't know that, even though you may be the famous person, if you're not, Composing. If you're not writing, um, you, you, you know you're gonna get a you know the short end of the stick. Um, so I think if, if you want to look at hip hop as a career, I think you need to look at all of all of those elements. How much, how involved are you in making beats and doing this and doing that? Um, but as a person who comes from the hip hop world, I think that that should never be a justification for sacrificing why we're in hip hop, why we do what we do, why we love what we love. Um, with regards to the question, do I need a lawyer and how accessible is legal advice? I think a lot of, a lot of artists um, get shortchanged. I don't think you necessarily need a lawyer. I think there are a lot of um, fraternities and support groups that take my way. I think, you know, my understanding there was a lot of support. You can go to a lot of people and, and talk to people and, you know, there and ask, you know, what do you think of this contract, etc. But I think this is my personal opinion. Whatever gave you, whatever you're doing, you need a contract. Whatever deal you're getting into, you need a contract. And you do need um, a legal, an opinion. It doesn't have to be necessarily from a lawyer, because also you must understand there are not a lot of lawyers in this, in this industry. Um, you know, people, people, there are not a lot of lawyers who understand um, music, entertainment, and that kind of thing. Um, so you need to get advice from someone who's been in the industry, someone you can trust. And if you don't understand anything in the contract, don't sign. I think a lot of artists are pressured, you know, geez, I need to get this gig. I need, you know, and, and, and you do it and you find yourself in a very, what seems like a good position for the night, but long term you find out that, hey, but so-and-so so actually got 
so much more than, you know, or whatever. It was just not a fair deal. So I wouldn't say you need a lawyer. I think what we actually need to do is create more accessible structures. Um, I know that they're there, and I know a lot of people are trying, but, you know, there are organizations, for example, like Samro, um, which is, you know, is really out there, and it's, it's big. And I think, and Andre, we had a, you know, a good chat um, during the week, where we want to get more involved in, in hip-hop. Because I think hip-hop, for a long time, because of the traditional structures, because of history, has always been sort of an illegitimate genre, you know, in music. And I think now, whether it's because it's making more money in the world, you know, more money than you know, most other genres, all of that, people are starting to pay attention. So um, I just think that needs to be <coughs> ongoing. So that legal advice is accessible without needing to you know, consult a lawyer. And you can't even consult a firm most of the time, because they don't know anything. They just know corporate law and company law. So, um, yeah. And is administrative, <coughs> administering royalties difficult? Hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> if, I suppose if you want, there, there are structures. There definitely are structures um, for administering royalties. Samuel mm -hmm. is a case in point. You know, Dalro. <coughs> they have a, you know, the other, the other, the other structures. Um. So they they do what they do, and I think it's just about getting the right relationship. And I think also Samuel is growing. You know, um, it's it's learning to be more in touch with different. Are the types of composers and and that is so from that perspective it shouldn't be difficult it shouldn't be difficult to mandate um, you know the the, the administering, administering organization and they should actually take care of everything for you because from, for you personally to find out what the SABC has played for you in X Y Z is going to be very difficult um, and from actually just as a side note there was a case uh, a judgment that came out of the US very recently where they declared digital downloads to not be performances. And that's probably going to have a huge ripple effect because we were all thinking, you know, once our copyright act is in line and, you know, we'll be able to collect royalties for um, digital downloads. But since the US is, I don't think it's being appealed actually. Yeah. It is being appealed, yeah. Um, but if, if they, they stand with that or they stick with that judgment, um, Samuel wouldn't be able to collect. So that, I think that's a huge revision. <coughs> Out the window. What's, the, what's the basis for that? Well, they're saying it's, it's not a performance. It's, it's not a public, you know, it's, it's not being performed. It's, it's just, it's, a, it's being downloaded, but you're not performing it. What about the broadcast tracks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think that was actually, I think that was actually argued. I, I, I must admit, I haven't gone through that, that yeah. judgment, you know, but um, my understanding is that they just said it wasn't a performance. But I think that point was argued, but for whatever reason, it didn't stick. And it is, the law in the space is so arcane, and it's coming through from another era, and you know, it's yeah. kind of being buckled and warped yeah. by the digital space. You know, is it a mechanical work? Does needle time even make sense of anymore? anymore? Exactly. You know? Exactly. And I think what you were talking about earlier about the, I don't know if it's the Copyright Review Commission, you're talking about the, D, the DTA Commission to look at the music industry. Sandra was deep, deep, deep in the game with that review. I mean, we were, we presented Dalro as well, um, and record companies, and geez, a lot, a lot of Sandra license, you know, SATC, etc. I don't know how, how, you know, how far the, the reach was, but, and I, I don't know what's going to come out of in terms of, um, uh, updating the act, we're still waiting for the report, but that could be huge in terms of you know changing things because even from a literary uh, rights perspective, we find it very difficult to, to operate in the digital space. Um, and you know there's just websites and people's articles and da, da, da. so but I mean you know we're trying to do the best we can do for our authors, but it's very very difficult. And I think yeah we have no choice now. We have to we have to update it. Do we really need Samuel at the end of the day? Because, of the, like, because, like, you know, we're filling in Samuel papers, but nobody's getting back to us and stuff like that, you know. So even this other woman was talking about the alternative way, you know. So I'm trying to find out what is the other alternative way. What, what more, you know, is there? Is there more ways to get in, you know, basically? <laughs> okay, at this juncture, those people sitting right there with their computers next to you, Kyle with a white T-shirt. Craig with a black t-shirt. 
Are you going to be my friend? Yes. <laughs> I don't know where Angelo is. Angelo, we're in green. Those, those people are from our labs in Tarantel Street in Adflo. I'm um, in Bridgetown. And they are changing quietly and speedily the fates of so many people in our city. And not just our city, but in three years, in 15 countries. I want you to chat to these people or go to rlabs.org, get introduced to Webcraft, to the fluency of being online. If you feel like you don't have the money to be online, let them change your mind. They work with women who felt like there is nothing else for them but to be a prostitute, gangsters, drug addicts, suicide victims, people who are so deep in debt that they cannot get out. There is nobody in this room who has any excuse. I must say it sounds too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to like just go with it to know that. Right? Yeah. Yeah.